In this chapter, we're going to tackle the issue of data scaling and examine the effect of rescaling the dependent or independent variables on the standard errors, T statistics, F statistics, and the confidence intervals. As we will see, when we rescale any of the variables, it preserves all the measurement effects and testing outcomes. So nothing will change except our data will be rescaled. And I'm going to show you these effects using an example. In this example, we are interested in knowing the birth weight of a child in ounces depending on two variables. The first variable is the number of cigarettes smoked by the mother while she is pregnant. And these are the number of cigarettes per day. And this variable family income, it shows annual family income in thousands of dollars. And we wanted to know how these two variables affect child birth weight in ounces. So this is the first model. I'm going to regress. Next, what we want to do is we want to convert this variable into pounds. That is child birth weight in pounds rather than in ounces. And we're going to do it by dividing this birth weight by 16 because there are 16 ounces in one uh, pound. So I'm going to create a new variable birth weight in pound and I'm going to attach it with the data. So in the next model, I'm going to regress birth weight in pounds rather than birth weight in ounces on the same uh, explanatory variables that is cigarettes and family income. And I'm going to save uh, the results as model two. In the third model, what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure what is the impact of smoking cigarettes on birth weight. But in this case, rather than using the number of cigarettes per day, I'm using the number of packs of cigarettes per day. And because there are 20 cigarettes in each pack, I'm going to regress birth weight on the packs of cigarettes that a female smokes while she's pregnant. So that is my third model. And my fourth model is I'm going to represent birth weight in ounces in the log form. And then I'm going to represent birth weight in pounds in the log form. So these are the five models that I'm going to regress. And then I'm going to show you all the results in a table and discuss these results. Okay, so our first model, model one uses birth weight in ounces. So according to this, we can talk about three things that I described earlier. The first is the relationship between birth weight in ounces and the number of cigarettes. And we see that the relationship is negative. More cigarettes means birth weight reduces. And then we, we can talk about the size of the relationship and uh, the statistical significance of uh, the relationship. We see that the relationship is negative and it is statistically significant. And here I'm going to talk about the magnitude of the result. So according to this result, if a woman smokes five more cigarettes per day, birth weight is predicted to reduce by minus 0.463. This coefficient value multiplied by five. So this will give us 2.317 ounces. In the second model, we are using birth weight in pounds rather than in ounces. From model two, we get that birth weight will reduce by minus 29 multiplied by 5, 0.14 pounds. And in terms of ounces, this is equal to 0.145 multiplied by 16 because there are 16 ounces in a pound. So this will give us 2.3 one ounces. This is exactly equal to what we got here. So if we rescale our variables, nothing will change except the unit of interpretation of uh, these coefficient values. This coefficient value, it is about 16 times lower than this value. Similarly, the standard error is 16 times lower here in the pounds as in here. We already know that what's going to happen with the t values identical. Similarly, confidence interval, the endpoints of confidence interval will be 16 times different, right? Look here what is happening with the R squared. R squared is exactly the same. So from this, we can see that nothing has changed except that our coefficient values and standard errors are 16 uh, times different than the original values. Our statistical significance is exactly the same and our R squared values are identical. 
Okay, so that was if we change our dependent variable. Now we're gonna slightly change our explanatory variable that is the number of cigarettes will be replaced by the packs of cigarettes. And we'll see that our new model will have 20 times the coefficient value. So model three coefficient value will be 20 times model one. So nothing will change here as well. And the standard errors will also be 20 times larger in uh, model three as compared with model one. And similarly, the t-stat will be identical no matter we measure the number of cigarettes or the packs of cigarettes. Seems like rescaling has only a nominal effect on uh, these efficient values. Okay, one more thing. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna change the dependent variables in log form. In model four, my dependent variable birth weight is represented in ounces and in column five, it is represented in pounds, but both are taken in the log form. And because the logs, they give us elasticities, as I discussed in one of the earlier chapters, we see that apart from the intercept, everything else is identical across these two columns. They are giving us the same efficient values, same magnitude and same statistical significance. Their R squared is identical. Apart from the intercept, there is nothing different across these two models. Although the dependent variable in one equation is in ounces and in other equation it is represented in pounds. Elasticity as we know is unit free and by taking the log we are getting rid of the effect of the unit of measurement as we can see all the results are identical. So we can argue that rescaling preserves all the characteristics of a model and our main coefficient values and the estimated effects, their standard errors t values r squared it's not much different except that the coefficient values and standard errors they are uh, represented in different units but the t values and r squared they do not change all right in the next video i'm going to introduce you to what we call beta coefficients we're going to standardize our variables before measuring their effects all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye